Hey there, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review. We're winding down on the Adam Sandler Marathon, getting to his Netflix films. Uh, thanks to someone I know, I was able to see these because I don't have Netflix. But I would say of all of them, the one I actually liked is this one, The Do-Over. I don't mind this film. It's not great. There are issues with, you know, maybe a little issue of pacing. There's a bit where they visit Adam Sandler's mother, which, um, not much in that sequence made me laugh too much. But it was nice to see David Spade and Adam Sandler play off each other together in a buddy movie. Because... I like those two guys. I like seeing them together. And David Spade sort of plays the straight man in this. And Adam Sandler kind of played his straight too, but there's comedy. But it's definitely a different role from David Spade. And I appreciate that because he's a guy who he's got a mustache and he's stuck in this unhappily married situation where his wife is a bitch the kids are fucking assholes he's a bank manager in a supermarket that begins in a class reunion where David Spade's wife is messing around with Sean Astin on the dance floor <clears throat> and while they're you know, he's very unhappy you can tell I did. I like David Spade. It was nice to see him play a different kind of role. And it shows that he can do it, in my opinion. And during the class reunion, he finds Adam Sandler. And they knew each other when they were much younger. And they go off and they hang out with each other. And Adam Sandler talks about how, well, this guy, back in the day, they're counselor oh it never would amount to admit anything and then Adam Sandler goes I guess Mr. Falcon can suck my dick and he he pulls out a badge and apparently he is an FBI agent he has a gun and then as he's talking scenes like this are a reason why I like David Spade in the movie because you he you can tell he's sad that he's stuck in the same rut that he was in high school and like wishes he could do it all over and things of that nature and I'm saying he sees that he's sad so he invites him out to this yacht and one thing leads to another fates their deaths Adam Sandler and David Spade's like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, oh, I faked our deaths. And look, now, where these people, let's go to where these people are. And then some twists and turns. And you find out who Adam Sandler really is. And these guys are trying to kill Adam Sandler, as well as David Spade. And it becomes more of like an action comedy. And granted, the action is not to run home about. I would easily put Bulletproof above this. I think Bulletproof is a much better film. But considering a lot of people call this a piece of shit and you know one of the worst films he's done, this is to me easily better than Pixels. That's my boy, fucking Jack and Jill going overboard. Ridiculous Six, which was the previous Netflix film I saw before this piece. You know that that piece of shit is way worse than this. After Ridiculous Six, I think this is a big step up. And concerning all the other Netflix films, like The Week Of, which was boring, meh. And Sandy Wexler was like, yeah, but it's like two and a half hours long. This one, I thought was pretty decently fun. You know, going more into spoilers as to why I think that. I like the bit where... Adam Sandler, <laughs> David Spade's like, hey, I got these C braces. Adam Sandler, oh, that's nice. And just throws it <laughs> right from Spade's face to fuck with them. Or he's trying to you know, break this bottle. 
Oh, you brought it to my eye. You're shooting me. No, I'm fucking with you. So it was nice that it was R-rated, so Adam Sandler can throw the curse words and be more natural. And I know more, more than not, people will think that Adam Sandler just sleepwalking. I disagree. I just think he's not being so over the top like on other movies. He's being more low-key. So I don't really think of it as sleepwalking. I think of it as him being more low-key and not as over the top and annoying or anything. Which I appreciated. You do get some titties in there because some women show their titties when they're on the yacht. Uh, other fun bits is what uh, Davis Bay finds out he got roofied by Ab Sally. He tries to beat him up. He's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And he tries and he trips. He <laughs> runs into the door, breaks the fucking door because he can't control his body yet after being roofied. Uh, I don't know, there's one more where he worked at a bank manager in a supermarket, but people just assume, oh, you worked at the supermarket. No, I worked at the bank as part of the supermarket. No, you you work at, uh, you work at Save and Pay. And just the way Dave Spade goes, I don't work at Save and Fucking Pay. <laughs> or even when they uh, get this key and they're talking with someone in Puerto Rico, I think it's Adam Sandler goes, he tosses his eyes like, you're not one of the Mario Brothers, are you? <laughs> I, I, I just say this out loud, but without images, and I can't do that because I'm getting in trouble with copyright. People are like, what the fuck are you talking about? But this guy did look a little bit like Mario from the Mario Brothers, so I thought that was a funny line from Sandler. Luis Guzman's in the film. And yeah, once in a while, they try to be a bit too raunchy, which you did not need. Uh, like Luis Guzman and Vice David Spade to a threesome. Although I will admit I did get a laugh where David Spade, he's never done this before. And Luis Guzman's like, you gotta stop staring at me. Hey man, you're still staring at me. You gotta stop doing that, man. That's poor threesome <laughs> etiquette. That's poor threesome etiquette. So I thought that bit was funny. But then they go overboard where you didn't need to see Luis Guzman's balls. So that's what I mean, like, once in a while, either that, or there's a bit where Adam Sandler's fucking a doll, like a, a sex doll. That could be easily cut out. You didn't need it. And in fact, if you cut those little bits out, it probably would have helped a bit with the pacing. So that's why I'm saying, like, it's, it's not a great movie. There's little raunchy bits like that you didn't need. But that didn't ruin the entire film for me. You know, I like the banter between Sandler and David Spade. Like the next one was Sandler's uh, fuck with him with the, the food. and Also, the, the little twist that Adam Sandler's character I liked and I appreciated. Which I, I guess I'll, I'll be giving away. But they, they don't, you know, these guys try to Kill him, kill them. They're wondering who these guys are. There's this bit where they find this, uh, the wife of the one of the guys they're pretending. I'm trying to think. Should I give the shit away? You know what? I'll say. It's an action comedy with David Spade and Adam Sandler. The action is not going to floor you. Like I was, I would again, I would put Bulletproof easily above this. It's still a Netflix movie. the The action isn't going to blow you away or anything. It's like eh. it. It's more about the comedy and the action. I, I liked Adam Sandler and David Spade's roles. I liked the, the characters they played. I liked that they were in an R-rated buddy movie. It could have been funnier. It didn't need so you know some of the raunchy bits that they have in there. Uh, this whole bit with the Adam Sandler's mom who's senile. I'm not sure if you needed that bit, but I did like the story. I liked the little twist that came about it. 
which I'm going to give away right now to further explain. I like that you think David Spade and the girl are going to get together and you realize the girl, she's actually one of the villains. I like that because that's not a typical thing. Although Grant that kind of reminds me of Bulletproof now. So I, I guess if it involves Adam Sandler, the guy who Adam Sandler is with, the girlfriend, doesn't really... So I guess that's it's kind of like Bulletproof. But it's not a typical thing you see in movies, so I do appreciate that idea. Also, throughout the film, you see Adam Sandler, like he keeps changing, like he's an FBI agent. No, he works at a morgue. No, it's this and that. Um, when they go into this house, he's not marveling the house. He's looking for stuff. There are times he's tired and he's taking pills. And you're like, what's going on here? And then you find out. And. When I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty neat. Sailor's character had cancer. And the main reason he brought David Spade into this and faked their deaths and went into the situation is that there's these people, they're fighting the cure for cancer, or at least a way to regress it. And then the guy who was doing it got killed. He wanted to find out more about it. And he has a wife and he has a kid. And that's why he's so adamant on searching for this. It's not about money or anything. It's about this hopefully stopping this cancer so he can get back to his girl and his kid. And I thought that brought a little bit of a heart to it. And when Davis B realizes, I was like, oh, okay. And again, uh, some of the fun bits with Adam Sandler, I like some of his dialogue, when he, he gets his vice on this guy, and I'm going to squeeze your head so hard, the fucking mustache will pop off your head. <laughs> but I like the idea, you know, I didn't expect that, that Adam Sandler's character had been having cancer, that's why he's so adamant about this, that's why he's searching for information, it's not about money or the house, and... I like this bit of where it's like, well, think about it. A drug that gets rid of chemo therapy and all that stuff would cost them trillions. And that's why. The one guy who was in Funny People that they kind of thought looked like Alexander Gudinov from Die Hard, he appears in this as a villain. That's funny. And Funny People, they made fun of him. They looked like a villain. So then they got him to play a villain in the movie. And he did a good job. He definitely did remind me a little bit of Alexander Grudinov. Granted, Alexander Grudinov is better, but he did fine with it. At one point, Adam Sandler's character gets tortured, and Adam Sandler keeps fucking with the guy, which I had fun with. David Spade's character, I like the idea that you, at the, you think he's going to fall for the lady and he immediately punches her because he doesn't believe her. That I didn't see that coming. I thought that was fun. And then even the battle at the end, you think it's going to be battle with Adam Sandler and such, but no, it's Adam Sandler's girlfriend slash wife comes in and beats the fuck out of the, the lady villain and just punches his shit. And then David Spade and Adam Sandler are just watching. Just watching the whole thing. <laughs> And slow-mo while all this stuff is happening. And he even gives David Spade weed in the middle of watching his gopher beat the fuck out of this evil like villain. And then the info that's on this laptop just throwing the water. I was like, you fucking threw the shit in the fucking water. But you find out that David Spade saved that. You packed it up, you careful motherfucker. I'm, I mean, I'm doing a bad job explaining it. This is one of those films that's hard to review because I didn't want to give stuff away, but at the same time, I do have to give stuff away to explain why the hell would I like an Adam Sandler Netflix movie. And I know a lot of people don't like this film. If you look up reviews, 
I don't think there's a single positive review of the film on YouTube, <laughs> at least as far as I could find. And I'm like, I've seen almost all of Adam Sandler's films. I have reviewed them for you guys. Believe me, this is I don't think this is that bad of a film. Go watch Ridiculous Six again. Go watch the the new the boring one, The Week Up, which just came out, which I'll talk about. Go watch Going Overboard. Go watch Chuck and Larry. I'm sorry that I know there's a guy who likes that film, but I thought Chuck and Larry's fucking lame. To each their own. If you like it, that's cool. We agree to disagree. I did not like Little Nitty. I did not like Eight Crazy Nights, which I didn't review because I'm like, I don't want to watch that film again because I really think it's unfunny. This one, David Spade and Adam Sandler thought worked well together. It was nice to see David Spade take on a different kind of role. It was nice to see Adam Sandler go into an R-rated realm again. That, like, that's my boy. It's a lot worse than this movie. Like, this is, I think, a better R-rated movie for Adam Sandler, and that's my boy. His best one, I still think, is Bulletproof. Which that's one of his most underrated ones. But compared to That's My Boy, this film is a lot better. Again, there, there's po moments of pacing I would have cut out, moments of being too raunchy I would have cut out, but I like the reviews of Adam Sandler's character, among other stuff. Uh, it gave a teeny bit of heart to it. Uh, this is a film I wish was on DVD, but Netflix doesn't put their movies on DVD unless it's Stranger Things Season 1. But that's the thing I don't like about Netflix is that they don't have physical media like Bright to Will Smith. I would love to have that on a Blu-ray, but nope, they never released it on it. Uh, this film, I like to have a DVD of it, but I can't. I would, I would pick this up on DVD. I had a decent enough time. That's the thing. If you see this for watch and you have Netflix, I think of the Netflix films. If you had to pick one, I would say it's this one. Maybe you say that's not much to say, but I had a good fun time waster. That's the best way to put it. It was a fun time waster. Not perfect, not great, but I was entertained. And I liked the two leads. I thought Adam Sandler didn't do that bad of a job. I like they, him, they, again, they played a little bit more of a straightforward you know, characters. And I appreciated that. So, overall... Yeah, I wish this film had a DVD release, but again, that's the the problem I had with Netflix. I don't know, like they they made it such a for Stranger Things season one, which I know I still haven't seen that show, but like they rarely make that's like one of the only times. But go figure. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. -bye.